Hi, I'm Elge Valovirta, and this one is about Celestin V30 versus Celestin 25 watt green bag. That intro was shot about a week ago. I've been so busy mixing stuff, but now the, the V30 is in, in there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use this one of my custom shop, Japan custom shop, ESPs, 230V, 7 string, this is tuned down to drop G sharp. So as the heading says, this is about comparing the two speakers, the green back and the V30 in a metal context. So drop G sharp, really low, EMG 707 pickup, straight into Mesa Boogie Mark V on a Mark IIc Plus mode. So I'm gonna record a track next, and then we'll go to the the screen, and and we'll you know I'll show you and you will hear the differences between the speakers and how you can blend them and some EQ and mixing tricks when you're you know mixing music that has heavy and down to guitars. Before we go to the screen, so the microphone is single SM57 with this SE electronics kind of isolation thing. Now it's on the green back and then I have a V30 on, on that position. The, the upper row, the, the, there's green backs. All right, now we are on my Cubase. And how I recorded this is obviously, you know, the cap was pretty loud. So I used headphones so that I can hear the, the backing tracks, the drums and bass. And then that was just pounding in there and that way I recorded. If I would use my mirrors, obviously, even though it has this isolation thing. It would have picked up the, the background music too, because I would have need to play that really loud because the cabinet was pretty loud. But I just had the music here, really loud here, and then that was pounding, and I recorded that. Yeah. The microphone was, uh, you know, cap on the cap edge. So where there's the, you know, the nipple and then the beaker. So it was just on, on that edge. So you get the high end and the little bit of that low low end sound. That's usually how I I mic the cabinet with or speaker with SM57. It's kind of the, the sweet spot. Then it's just a matter of fine-tuning it a little bit. Right, here's a song. I originally wrote this for Jens Bogres, Down to IR Pack. Very simple, you know, riffage kind of, kind of thing. As you can see, there was one take, so the playing is okay. So here we have two tracks, Pad Hard Left, hard right with green backs, then these blues are with V30s, and then I played a solo, tried to play similarly. So these are on and so I actually played this, you know, the, the, the riffs four times, and then green back solo, V39. V30 solo. So let's uh, put the song on, and I will use the faders to Blend in both cabinets so you hear the, the differences. All right, rock and roll. As you hear, the greenbacks, they have a little bit deeper low end and that kind of, you know, really aggressive high upper 
mid kind of thing. And the B30s have a more mid and the low end is, is tighter. Now let's listen to the rhythm guitar guitars just in solo so you you'll hear better. So let's start with the with the green backs. Like that. And there's no EQ now. As you probably hear, the low end is a little bit and, and the, the high saw, there's a lot of that, which I kind of like. But uh, let me show you how, how you can, or usually how I EQ guitar. So never in solo, always in the context of a mix, because no, one, no one's going to hear your mixes, your guitar tracks in solo. Except, well, you just heard. <laughs> this, is, this is just a, not really a finished song or anything. It's just a you know, piece of riffage. A few words about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. What is a Skillshare? It's an online learning community with thousands of courses about many different subjects. Music production, recording, gardening, you name it. If you're a beginner or maybe more advanced and want to learn how to use Cubase, which is my DAW, there's a cool course from Uriah K, who's been a... Uh, music producer for the past 12 years. This is a music production masterclass from recording, mixing to mastering. Strong recommendation if you want to learn how to use Cubase. And the first thousand people who use the link in the description or my code Elgevalovirta will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. A rhythm guitar bus is there. And what I have now, there's the green box. What I use, I use the, the soft tubes console on, on every track. With drums, uh, I use the, uh, let me show you a kick bus. I use the British Class A, which is a Neve, really simple. And then, okay, here's pull tech EQ, EQ on the kick bus. But on pretty much everything else, I use the SSL 4000E. Great EQ. I usually boot, if I need to boost low end, I boost 100. That's, that works just great. And the top end is, 8000, 8K, SSL, it sounds great, that's presence. All right, let's listen.
just clear out the mud, add it a little bit back around 100 hertz, and then a little bit boost on, on the 8K to more presence. I mean, now this is didn't really necessarily need because there's there's no vocals, no keyboards, nothing else. The bass is pretty quiet here for, for this purpose. But this is something I, I probably will sometimes do. Sometimes if I feel that uh, I need to make the guitars even more forward without adding volume, I usually use parallel compressors. So I have here Empir Empire Collapse Mic E, which is a soft tube plugin. It's pretty much kind of like a distressor. So let me show you what, what that, that does. As you saw, it doesn't really compress and it's parallel, only 50%, but the, this compressor has a sound. So many times I use compressors in mixing, not necessarily to tame the signal, to compress, but to add certain character, certain flavor of different compressors. They, they sound different and I really like this, this mic -y with guitars and, and with bass. And I actually have it on uh, yeah, Nuke, so all in, it's on the, the room, ambience microphone bust okay then let's see what we can do with the v30s let's put this on let's put all to no compression no eq no high cut no low cuts and the v30 Yeah, like that. So again, low cut. I remember how much I had it on the on the on the green box. But you know, that you what I do is that I I move it like here. And then okay, now the low end disappears. Then I move it back where it it comes alive again, and without and so that it, it cleans the mud mud. And sometimes, if I feel I I add usually with this low tuning. I don't find a reason to add any any bottom end because the bass is taking care of that. And usually the 8K, like you heard, it just adds this nice presence. You know, it makes it cut through. And the my key compressor, again, it wasn't really compressing, only a like a dB, and it was like parallel 50%, so pretty much nothing. But it just has a a sound. Okay, then let me show you another cool thing is because I I've said many times when you have asked what are my favorite speakers. I even create back at V30. And you can get really nice sounds if you if you blend them. So let's put the left green back right V30. Let's listen how that sounds. All four. So you can get really cool songs by 
you know, using both speakers and, and blending blending them in. Okay, then let's let's check out the, the lead guitars. Let's mute the rhythm guitar voice. <laughs> Playing wasn't that good. I, I muted. I had a little bit of a even tight pitch shifter and delay, but now it's it's completely dry. As you can hear in the lead context too, but maybe not so well that the. V30 is kind of a little bit uh, smoother top end, it's more, more mix, more like singing. And a green bag is it's just really kind of filthy. I, I, I like it. I like them both, both a lot. Great, great speakers. And the, the lead, lead uh, guitar bus, uh, let me put this back on. I think it needs some EQ that was a little bit low, low kind of kind of thing. <laughs> A little bit of whoops, a little bit of compressor in there just to jam it down a bit. But not much. It just kind of glues it a little bit. And I don't think this doesn't need anything else, but just cut the low because there's bass and rhythm guitars. a little bit of 8K to make it more in your face. That's it. Hopefully you get got your answers, you know, which one, which speaker suits better for down to metal. I think they both work really well. That's why I have them both on, on my Marshall cabinet. Sometimes I found that V30 does the job better. Sometimes create back. Sometimes it it depends on the on the amplifier. You know, the boogie, the two C plus. It's really aggressive. I had quite a lot of a lot of highs in there. And sometimes with green backs, there could be this upper, you know, high that maybe because you know it's an old speaker. It works really well with plexis and stuff because it had that high. But I really like how it works with high gain amp. But let me actually show you one one trick. I I find out during the years that if if I find that feel that the the green bug is a little pointy, let me show you what you can do to to tame it, tame the hype a little bit. Four K. Usually, that's where, depending of obviously where is your microphone. But usually with green backs, and actually many many guitar speakers, if you feel that there's that you know you don't want to cut the highs to lose the presence, the aggression, but you want to just remove something. Well, usually I start with four K, and then if, if that doesn't do, then I just sweep a little bit. But I find out that on the SSL EQ, if I want presence, top end aggression, eight K. If I want to remove some upper harshness, that's usually around 4K. If I want to add low, that's 100 hertz. And low cut, whatever, it, you know, feels feels good that you get rid of the mud. And I, that's pretty much the all the EQing I, I, I do. I don't really fuss with the mix. Because, I mean, if I get, if I record something by myself, I'm, I make sure that the guitar sound is good from the get-go. That basically I don't need to... I don't have to do anything. But sometimes you need to do little things. And if I get tracks from other bands that I haven't recorded, I mix other other bands. I feel that you know, if the guitar player has dialed a sound, 
the player and the producer they they spend time they they've digged in the sound if the sound is if there's a lot of lot of mix okay that's the guitar, guitarist sounds that's what he likes if it's cool then it's cool that's what he likes then i usually just add high 8k and maybe sometimes some bottom end and if there's really harsh frequencies sometimes i i i do a little bit of this but I don't really generally do any surgical stuff, or or I don't I don't mess with the mix because that's the the guitarist sound. Because by adding highs and a little bit lows, it doesn't really change the sound. Because you know, guitar's core sound it's kind of lives in the mix. Those are the different characters between amps. You know, Marshalls have more mix, rectifiers less, fifty one fifty less. So that is the the character. But if you add highs and a little bit lows, maybe, and cut lows, it doesn't change the character. You, ju you just want to make it, you know, in the, in the, in the mix that, it, that it, it works. Hopefully, you found this interesting and informative. Conclusion, which one is better? They're both better. <laughs> They're both really good. Matter of personal preferences. You know, my suggestion, get both. Get a good cabinet. You really can't go wrong with a Marshall cabinet. Put a green box V30s in there. You know, you, you're good to go with any kind of music. Also, down metal. All the best. See you on the next one. Bye.